I'm Shelley Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. Please join us for tonight's tale about an emperor who finds true friendship from a lowly kitchen maid and a plain little bird called the Nightingale. ago, but that's exactly why you should hear it now, before it is forgotten. You know, of course, that in Cathay, the emperor was a Cathayan, and all the people around him were Cathayan too, but very few were ever allowed to look upon the emperor. In those days, the emperor's palace was the finest in the world, entirely made of the rarest porcelain, absolutely beyond price but so fragile and delicate that you had to take the greatest care when you moved about. tying these little silver bells onto these flowers? The emperor directed that little silver bells be tied onto the loveliest to make sure that nobody passes without noticing. My mother is quite ill, and I'm bringing her scraps from the emperor's table. Scraps from the emperor's table are well and good. But have you given her a bowl of magical tea? No. What will it do? When the moon is full, if you dig up the root so that it may be touched by a single moonbeam, the tea you brew from it has magical powers. Oh, so I've been told. Where do I find this wonderful? Go to the forest. Call the fairies, Primrose and Pansy, and they will lead you to it. Or so I've been told. <sighs> Thank you. So ill, won't you please show me where the magical root is? Here we are in the 
Ginseng has its most magical powers. It is with this root that the little kitchen maid cured her ailing mother. In those days, the forest stretched all the way to the clear blue sea, and in a tree at the very edge, lived the nightingale. Ah, how beautiful it is. Indeed. strange thing was that no one in the court, not even the emperor himself, knew about the nightingale. Because none of them, not even the emperor himself, ever left the palace. The emperor of all Cathay will now address the court. The Emperor of all Cathay will now express his thoughts. The Emperor of all Cathay will say something. Why should I? Each night before we retire, you tell us that all is well in our vast and glorious empire. <sighs> well, it isn't. Oh. As all of you know, travelers come from every country in the world to admire my porcelain palace. Poets write thrilling poems. Normally, I'm too busy to read them. Normally. But tonight, I read them. Oh. <laughs> As I expected. They're full of splendid descriptions of my splendid realm, my splendid palace. My splendid garden. Mm. My splendid swords. Mm. My splendid wardrobe. Mm. And of course, my splendid self. Ah. But then came a surprise. Huh? But with all these wonders, Nothing could match the nightingale and its exquisite song. Nightingale? I know of no nightingale. 
wondrous nightingale. Fabulous nightingale. Incomparable nightingale. The things one learns from books. Why then has no one ever told me of it? <laughs> Prime Minister? I have never heard anyone mention this creature, Your Imperial Majesty. Ladies and gentlemen of the court. Mm -hmm. I can say with certainty it has never been presented at court. Master of the Imperial Music. Oh no, Your Imperial Majesty. This book was sent to me by the High and Mighty Emperor of Japan. It cannot be untrue. I wish to see this nightingale tonight or I will have you all punched in the stomach. Oh. Oh. Palace? Not likely. <laughs> we have no birds, but we have some nice little bells. I know someone who goes out of the palace every evening to the forest and all the way down to the sea. Huh? An island girl? Oh, yes. You have seen this animal. <laughs> Goodness, yes. Yeah. Oh, that bird can sing. Please don't step where it's wet, sir. Little kitchen maid, the emperor of all Cathay has commanded the presence of this bird at court this very evening. That's a good idea. I'm sure the Emperor of all Cathay will be pleased with the little nightingale. Of course, I've never seen the Emperor myself, but... Get up. Get up. Now, can you lead us to this magical nightingale? Oh, yes. If you do, I shall bestow upon you the permanent title of Imperial Kitchen Maid oh. and permission to watch the Emperor dining. <laughs> Not every meal, perhaps. Twice a week. We leave at once. only a fox. A fox? That's what she said. We still have a long way to go. I hear it! Delightful. Similar to the sound of little temple bells, I should say. What a success it will be at court. Oh, no. That is only a frog croaking in the pond. 
A frog. A frog. We still have a long way to go. Oh. Nightingale, the Emperor of all Cathay wishes to hear you sing. It is my pleasure. My fine little Nightingale, I am not your Emperor. It is my very pleasant duty to summon you to court this evening. We shall enchant, our Emperor, your sweet song. It sounds best in the open, but I will come with greatest honor. I believe you accept my... To the palace! Quick! Hurry! For your Imperial Majesty's most royal indulgence, a delicate pâté compounded of rendered yak, Rare spices, exotic herbs, and the tongues of hummingbirds. <clears throat> For your Imperial Majesty's most royal gratification, a gently roasted suckling pig raised exclusively on the milk of lambkins and glazed with the honey of rare Himalayan bees. Mm. I tasted this before. Some years ago. Oh, no, Your Majesty. Hmm. In the springtime. Oh, no, Your Majesty. That suckling pig was glazed with the honey of rare Kashmiri beans. Perhaps. For Your Imperial Majesty's most royal gustatory amusement, a peacock stuffed with a goose, stuffed with a pigeon, stuffed with a quail, stuffed with a single teeny tiny canary egg of the rare blue canary of Siam. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> I found the nightingale. I have found it, Your Majesty. I found the nightingale. Where is it, then? Where is it? Where is the nightingale, Your Imperial Majesty? I have found the nightingale. I am the nightingale. Punch in the stomach. 
Can you imagine the how? There is the nightingale. song has gone straight to my heart. I wish to reward you. You might have my golden slipper to wear around your neck. Oh. Thank you. No. I have been rewarded enough. I have seen tears in the Emperor's eyes. For me, that is the richest treasure. Very well, little bird. How can I reward you then? Perhaps you could give something to everyone else. <gasps> Prime Minister, you may open the treasury, give everyone in my kingdom a ruby in honor of this remarkable bird that's just made the Emperor so happy. Your Imperial Majesty, we may not have that many rubies. The Memrods then. Simply. All Cathay, your most gracious Imperial Majesty. Is it? So it is. Give me a song, little bird. So many different songs, each more ravishing than the last. I think I'll share it with the public this coming Sunday. Sing, little nightingale. More beautiful than tinkling bells. Definitely getting the hang of it. Listen. That's remarkable. Now, listen to me. Nighting. If it's a girl, we shall call her Nightingale. And if it's a boy, we shall call him Nightingale. Mm, clever indeed. Or is it more like... 
It's never the same song twice. A troublesome bird. The Emperor of all Cathay will now address the court. My dear subject, not only is all well in our vast and glorious empire, but our dear little nightingale has made us more content than ever. <laughs> Your Imperial Majesty, a gift from the Emperor of Japan. Mm. Must be some new books about our famous bird. Let's open it. This is the only one of its kind. Oh, it's rubies. Oh, oh brother, that's too you. Clockwork, mechanical bird, your imperial majesty. Mm. Music master, why don't you wind it up? Musically speaking, this new bird keeps perfect time, not like... Uh, from now on, you two should be known as the Chief Imperial Nightingale Bringers. <sighs> now, both birds might sing at once, a, a duet, as it were. That's a good idea. Um, ready yourself, little bird. And one, and two, and three, and... It's not the new bird's fault, Your Grace. She sings like clockwork, while that one sings whatever she pleases. That new one is so much prettier to look at. Mm. Mm. You know, I think those are sapphires. It's such a delicate shade of blue. But we must be fair. Let us hear our old bird once again. It's flown away. Oh. Bless my soul, what's the meaning of this? And without even a thank you, what manners? Ungrateful creature. We still have the better one here, Imperial Majesty. My thoughts precisely. That bird was so ordinary. Mm. If I may say so, ladies and gentlemen, and above all, your Imperial Majesty, with the real Nightingale, there was no telling what song she might sing, but with the artificial bird, one song will be heard, and no other. Frankly, Your Imperial Majesty, I never trusted that other bird when she said your tears were reward enough. She was just trying to flatter you. But I saw through it. I declare that from this time forth, the old nightingale will be banished from my porcelain palace forever.
emperor commands you to sing the song of the nightingale. Well, your highness, I, uh... Just do it. Sing me the song of the real nightingale. Well, forgive me, Your Honor, but I can't. It was always different and impossible to imitate. I shall give you the title of Imperial Mimic of the Clockwork Bird. Sing Pei. Bud tea. Eleven cups of it. Not me for the bird. Your Imperial Grace, I can't be of use here. Perhaps I should summon the watchmaker. Could it be that I backed the wrong bird? But why? For gazing up at you. I didn't see your banners or your servants, and so I didn't dream I was going to see you. I'm going to be punched in the stomach for sure, dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, since I am Emperor of all Cathay, to do these things at will, I'll give you a special dispensation. You may look at me. No stomach punching, I promise. as if I have seen you before. I must confess that only lately was I permitted to watch your time. Oh, really? By whom? His Excellency, the Prime Minister, granted me this great favor and gratitude for leading him to the night camp. 
Well, it was you then. Yes, Your Imperial Majesty. And I'm sorry she didn't please you and had to be banished. Except my shirt. It's cozy and warm, the shore. Yes, my mother made it for me. Mother. Yes. You don't look so well. Perhaps I should call your servants. No, I'd rather sit alone for a while. It's like that sometimes. Should I go now, Your Grace? Wish you a good evening. Inform the ladies and gentlemen of the court. The emperor has been stricken. The imperial doctors are with him now. We are to wait here. The prime minister shall rule on matters of state. Loved Emperor, ruler of all Cathay, is gravely ill. The doctors expect him to live for a short while. <laughs> I have composed a brilliant funeral dirge. It is our sad duty in these next days to select a successor. Our beloved Emperor. A brilliant funeral dirge. And a glorious inaugural anthem. say that. But you know what I say? Never too soon. <laughs> 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 
to the end. Let his final moments be peaceful and quiet. And then he calls, no one is to bother him. Has a new emperor been chosen? It's a great responsibility. The new emperor must be Cathayan and young so that he may rule all Cathay for many years. I totally agree. But not too young. Else he be hot-blooded and foolish. Ah. Will our new emperor be handsome and fine? Not too handsome and fine. Else he spend his whole day looking in the mirror. And not pay attention to the lovely ladies and gentlemen of the court. A good point. See, very. Ah, little kitchen maid. Would also like to know about the new emperor. Oh, no. No, I would know of the old emperor. Ah, well, he is dying. servants say he tosses and turns and that no one stays to comfort him in his last hours. And who pray? Be grand enough. Great enough to solace our great emperor in his final hours of his glorious life. Besides, he will not make it through the night. hours on earth. It breaks my heart that he must die all alone. Don't weep, little maid. I will gladly sing for the emperor tonight. Please hurry, little nightingale. There's not much time left. Sang. 
Why do you stop? First, I must have the golden crown. Churchyard where the white roses grow, and where the elder trees scent the air, where the fresh grass is watered with the tears of those who grieve. It's my garden you sing of. Oh, and I'm filled with a longing for it. Thank you, little nightingale. I have driven you from my palace and banished you. And still, you have driven the evil visions away from my bed and removed death from my heart. How can I ever reward you? I received tears from your eyes the first time I sang for you. I'll never forget that. But it was the little kitchen maid who summoned me to your bed. It is she who should be rewarded. But sleep now, my emperor, so you become well and strong, and I shall sing for you. I feel splendid. I shall break that clockwork bird into a thousand pieces. Oh, don't do that. It has done what it could. Keep it as before. But you must always stay with me. You must never leave my side. And furthermore... Oh, there I go again. Would you... Would you stay? You shall sing only when you like. No. Let me come and go as I please. I will sing to you of all that is good, or bad which is kept from you. For I love your heart better than your crown. Yet there is one thing you must promise me. Anything. Let no one know that you have a little bird who tells you everything. Then all will go well with your kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, the funeral will begin promptly at one. The master of imperial music has composed a lengthy dirge. Lengthy, but since it memorializes our beloved emperor, no dirge could be too long. A funeral feast of splendid proportion is being prepared in the great kitchen. In what order shall we march? Do we have a new emperor? I was just coming to that. Good morning. <laughs>
And so, with the help of the wise little nightingale and the loving kitchen maid, the emperor ruled all of Cathay for a very long time. And all his subjects, be they exalted members of the court or humble peasants, came to know and love him for his generous spirit and his kind heart. Oh.